All right, so let's do another example to determine whether there is a molecular dipole present or not in this molecule. And the molecule we're going to look at now is dimethyl ether. And the condensed formula for that is CH3OCH3, okay? So C2H6O. And um, let's go ahead and start by drawing the Lewis structure for this guy. And when we want to draw the Lewis structure, the first thing we need to do is add up the valence electrons, of course. So for the carbons, we have two carbons. They each contribute four valence electrons. We have six hydrogens, and they each contribute one. And then the oxygen contributes six valence electrons. And when we add all of that up, we are going to get 20. So we have 20 valence electrons. All right, so let's draw the skeleton for this molecule. So I'm going to put the oxygen in the middle, bond a carbon on each side, and each of these carbons has three hydrogens bonded to it. Okay, so by the time I finish writing down this connectivity or this skeletal structure here, um, I basically have almost drawn the entire Lewis structure. But we need to check, one, oxygen does not have an octet. We also need to make sure that we have used up all 20 valence electrons. So 2, 4, 6, 8, that's around one of the carbons. 10, 12, 14, 16, so we've used 16 electrons so far. We have 20 valence electrons that we need to use, and the only place to put them is on oxygen, which completes oxygen's octet. Okay, now, does this molecule have a molecular dipole? So this is one of those ones that could really trick you if you aren't thinking about the geometry. Because it kind of looks linear, doesn't it? But it actually really isn't. All right? And so look at that central oxygen and think about the steric number. Think about the steric number around oxygen. All right? And so the steric number around oxygen is four, right? Two lone pairs and two bonds to these, uh, these methyl groups the CH3 groups. Okay, so steric number is four around that oxygen, and if we were to just draw that oxygen center, what would we do? So we have two lone pairs, and let's see if this looks familiar to you. One lone pair there, another lone pair here, coming out at you, this one going back, and then there's one of the carbon groups, and there's the other. And so I'm going to condense it down a little bit. Okay. All right, so what shape is that? Okay, you're right. It's bent. Okay. Now, go ahead and pause this for a second and draw the dipole moment, the bond dipoles for the carbon-oxygen bonds. Okay, so if you drew them like this, the arrow pointing toward the oxygen because it's more electronegative, and see how they're both pointing in the overall up direction, away from carbon and toward oxygen. And so if we were to draw the overall dipole moment arrow for this, so let's go ahead and get orange here, then the overall molecular dipole would be pointing in the up direction overall. Okay? So watch out for these oxygens with lone pairs because remember it's not linear even though the way we've drawn it here that looks linear because I put one lone pair above the oxygen and one lone pair below the oxygen and you'll see that a lot but remember that is bent that shape around that oxygen center in this molecule is bent. And because of that, uh, dimethyl ether does have an overall molecular dipole moment. So it does have overall molecular 
dipole, and so we would say this molecule is polar.